In today's video, we'll be looking at a practical guide to selling your pre-owned Warhammer on eBay to hopefully recoup a lot of the money that you've invested into this hobby and potentially get some more money for reinvesting in new miniatures. Hello and welcome back to Auspets Tactics, the strategy and tactics focus 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop and today we're more about getting the most money back from our models once we're done with them to invest again in new projects. Now I've got an awful lot of experience selling models on eBay. I think I must have dealt with over 5,000 transactions as I used to do this while I was a student to make a little bit of money on the side. There are a ton of reasons why you might want to sell things on eBay. Maybe you don't have space for an army collection anymore, or you've lost interest in the faction and would rather devote your energy into another. If you have rule books that you think might be replaced in the near future, then it's worth selling them before they actually are. Or maybe if you've bought a big mixed lot on eBay and you don't want some of the miniatures, you'd rather just sell them back and recoup the money, then that's another very good motivation. Regardless of why you're selling, I've personally found operating from the UK that eBay is a really good way to get the appropriate value out of your miniatures, because essentially you're competing on a global stage, giving you the maximal chance of getting someone who's interested enough to pay how much the miniatures are actually worth, rather than, say, how much someone in your local area is willing to pay for it as that might not be as much. In this video, we'll look at how to organize listings and some basic tips in photographing, listing, packaging, posting, and dealing with any other issues. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first of all, you've got to decide what to sell. If you are selling your own painted miniatures, then bear in mind, it's almost always going to be a lot more time and money to get the exact same miniatures back again at a later date. So if you do think there's a reasonable chance that you might want to use them in the future, I would honestly just hang on to them. I've met a lot of people over the years who really regretted selling a prized army that they've invested enormous amount of hobby time and effort into it. And if it's gone to eBay, you won't get those same miniatures back. If in doubt, I'd probably hang on to them. Typically, Games Workshop products tend to hold on to their value quite well unless the actual miniatures themselves are replaced, so you can always sell at a later date if you aren't feeling like it right now. You might want to bear in mind exactly how much your items are likely to go for, as the amount of money that you get back from them might influence this decision. Next, say if you've decided to sell your old Tyranid army, for example, you have to decide on what portions and quantities you want to sell it in. Generally speaking, the smaller quantities that you sell the army in the more value you're going to get out of them, uh, down to a certain point where the postage becomes a factor. For example, if you just boxed up your entire Tyranid army and listed it on eBay, you're less likely to get the best value out of it because it's less likely that someone's going to want the exact same combo of models, monsters and rule books that you have in your own personal collection. You might get someone who's happy to pay the amount that they were going to pay for it purely for the monsters and the infantry just don't really interest them. Obviously, this is the quickest and simplest way of selling though, so if time is a big factor, then you could just go this way, take some decent photos of your whole army, and list it on eBay. The way I tend to do it is usually tending to list all models of a certain type as one lot together. For example, if I was selling a Tyranid army, and they had four Carnifexes in it, I would likely just list all of those Carnifexes together. In the past, I did used to list individual unit by individual unit, but in all honesty, there are trade-offs to that because you wind up having to force the buyers to pay for multiple postages. And of course, creating more listings takes a lot more time, as does packaging and posting them individually. I tend to find that I get a fairly similar amount out of listing, say, four Carnifexes together rather than selling them individually. So that's the route that I choose to go down. After this, you'll want to ascertain the value of the lot that you're selling. And this is the single biggest tip that I have in the entire video because eBay makes this very, very easy to do, if you know that it's an option. Basically, say if you search for Tyranid Carnifexes on eBay now, you'll come up with everyone who's selling a Tyranid Carnifex on eBay, but these will be the current items that are selling and haven't necessarily been sold yet, so you don't actually know if people are going to be prepared to pay, say, £25 for a Carnifex if someone has it listed there. But there is a simple trick to see how previous listings have ended. On the left-hand side of eBay's main search screen are a whole load of checkboxes that you can tick to narrow the search for your item or to restrict views to within the country, things like that. But the only one that I'm interested in is the sold items checkbox. I've taken a copy from eBay's site. It's in that little row of boxes down there just above deals and savings. If you check that box and search for Tyranid Carnifexes, then you'll see how much actual Carnifexes that people have sold have sold for. 
if you have a moderately well-painted pre-owned Carnifex, you can take a look at all the people who have sold a fairly similar model and roughly ascribe how much that model has sold for. So this means that you can know roughly what to price your model for when you're selling them on eBay. This is such a handy little shortcut as I used to have to guesstimate this when I was selling models in the past. I'm not even sure if eBay had this function, but now I can be pretty much guaranteed that I know the value of the item that I'm selling and I'm not losing potential sales money by letting it go far too cheaply. The only problem with this is that sometimes you might have an item that's a bit too unique to come up regular in eBay searches. In that case, it's a little bit harder. But for the vast majority of Games Workshop models, there is enough secondhand trade in them to give you an idea. After you've done this, you'll want to photograph each lot. I recommend checking out simple online and YouTube tutorials to see how best to do this, as it's a lot easier to see with pictures and video. The simple and effective way that's always worked for me, though, is to use a few A4 pieces of paper to create a white backdrop somewhere on the corner of a desk or something, get a lamp or overhead source of light to make sure that the models are well illuminated, and use a simple camera or even a phone on whatever close range setting it has to get up close detailed pictures of the models. Try and take three or four pictures for every single lot, unless it's something really simple like a rules book or a character model. People are a lot more happy to buy things on eBay if they can see every single detail of the auction, and if there is any damage or imperfection to it, I would advise this to make sure that this appears clearly in the photographs and the item description. Basically, people are really put off if you can't see exactly what you're buying, because particularly for Warhammer models, if the picture's really blurry, you can't tell whether you're buying a nice, neatly painted army that's going to be easy to repaint straight over, or if you're painting an army that someone's caked in a dozen layers of badly done paint, and the model is potentially useless unless you strip it with paint stripper. Now we actually come to listing the lot. In terms of the title, make sure that it obviously includes the name of the model and any other words that a potential buyer is likely to search. For example, if we were selling our Carnifexes again, we'd want to include the word Carnifex, the word Tyranid, maybe even give a brief description of what they're armed with, such as Tyranid Carnifex armed with Venom Cannon, and that should generally do the trick. It can be helpful to include multiple names in the title, say for Imperial Guard Infantry, I might call them Cadian Shock Troops Infantry Squad, because they're two essential words for the same thing, really. And I might be tempted to put in Astra Militarum and Imperial Guard, if it'll all fit on the title. In terms of the description, don't go overboard, you want to be time efficient about creating lots after all. Just say what the models are, say an infantry squad armed with las guns, one has a grenade launcher, they're painted to a good tabletop standard, and they haven't been based yet, and say that they will be supplied as they are seen in the pictures which helps answer a lot of questions before your buyer even bothers to get in contact with you. If they're coming with other things, say you're selling some new models, make sure that you say this will be supplied with instructions and bases, presuming it will of course, just so there's no confusion if anything is out of shot on your pictures. If there's any damage or missing parts to the models, absolutely mention these in the description. In general, pre-owned Warhammer will always go for a reasonable price anyway, even if very bad things have happened to the model in a past life. For example, I once sold my cousin's old Land Raider, which had seen a lot of neglect and had a lot of bits missing. But because Land Raiders are quite expensive in themselves, people are quite happy to pay, even for a very damaged and dilapidated model that they might be able to fix up or even just make into a cool terrain piece or something. Basically, the main thing with defects and damage is that it can just cause you a lot of hassle if it gets to the buyer and they're not happy with how the model was sold and they might ask for a return, which under eBay's policy you have to accept within a certain amount of days, if the item was considered not as described. It's really not worth your time to be getting into this sort of debates or arguments, so it's just easier to make sure that you list any potential defects with your auction in the description in the first place. Next, you have to decide on postage and whether or not you're going to ship to other countries as well. I know that this will vary massively country to country, but from the UK, it costs approximately £3 for a second class parcel, and say for a standard infantry squad like 10 Cadian shock troops which are very light and can be packed closely together, shipping around the world can be easily done for less than £10. Bear in mind that when you're selling things with a postage cost as well, eBay still does take a cut of the fees out of the postage, so it might make sense to increase the price of the postage just a little bit more than what it's actually going to cost to account for this, plus anything that you might be spending on packaging and of course the value that your time has that you're going to be spending packaging up the lots. You can offer free postage, and just assume that the cost of the postage is going to be covered in the overall value of the model, and that's absolutely fine. It does increase the 
priority of the listing in the eBay search algorithm, which is good. In general, I prefer not to do that though, and just have my own set rates for the within the country options and the outside the country options, and that does me absolutely fine. Whatever the split between the actual price you're paying for the model and the price you're paying for the postage, the only thing that will really matter to the buyer is the overall total cost. Finally, you need to decide whether you are going to run an auction or buy it now type sale. In the past, I always used to run auctions and tended to start them pretty cheaply, meaning that all of the lots would finish at the same time and most of them would sell the first time round. The advantage of this is that if a lot of people get interested in certain lots, you can have a bit of a bidding war and things can go a lot higher than they really should have done if you get lucky. The downside to auctions though is that if people don't get interested in one of your lots, say even if it's very expensive, but it's just a bit niche and only one person bids for it, then you could be having lots that go for less than the value that they really should have sold for and people can get some good deals. Typically, I'd make the decision based on how much time you have. I think that auctions are pretty good for quick sales as they'll guarantee that you get everything done in whatever amount of time you put the auction on for and then you can just happily post up everything and take it to the post office after you've done. But now I essentially use exclusively the buy it now system. The reason I do this is that now knowing the value of the item that I'm selling, I can happily start all of the auctions significantly higher than the highest sale that has been recorded on the previous sales in eBay. Say if typical Carnifexes like mine were selling for £20 per model, I'd price mine at 25 and then just leave it a week to see if anyone would buy at that. Sometimes people do, either they like the particular model that you have, they might like the paint job, or they might just not be very good at waiting for good deals. Likely most of the models won't sell if you're pricing them a fair bit higher, so my usual strategy is to reduce the cost of the model by 10% each week. This means that you're gradually bringing down the price and giving it a long amount of time for people to be interested and potentially buy at that new lower price before lowering it again until essentially you guarantee that someone is going to buy it because it will get so cheap that it's going to be undervalued. To my mind, this strategy gives you the highest chance of getting the best value out of your model. You could potentially reduce it really, really slowly and take even longer amounts of time over it if you really wanted to squeeze every penny out of it. But even this way, it is going to take you a few weeks to clear all the models. To be honest, that's absolutely fine by me. I'd rather make a little bit more and I'm happy to go to the post office once or twice a week to drop off any sales that I have. Just another word, if you do go on selling things over months and months, then you will be acquiring multiple eBay listing fees, which tend to be about 30 pence at the moment. Most of the time, I think it's going to not make too much of a difference compared with the extra money that you should be making from this system, but it can be a factor if you're letting things sit for months and months unsold. Finally, just before we leave auctions behind, if you're selling things at an auction, you may as well choose the highest amount of time that you can for eBay, usually 10 days as you're getting the most exposure for your models for free, rather than clicking on, say, something very short like three days, where people might not have a chance to even see that your models are on sale before they're already sold, potentially at a much lower price than they should be. Next, we come to packaging. And as we all know, model soldiers can potentially break, so it's important to do this step carefully. You might well have enough old spare cardboard boxes about the house to be able to post a reasonable number of models. And I managed with secondhand shoe boxes and brown paper and things for a long time. I've still never had to buy any bubble wrap or actual packaging stuffing material just because that stuff is so regularly included in anything that you order off eBay and things that you order from Amazon and things. So I've always been able to get by with just saving it when I have it. The main aims when you're packaging something up are that you want a box that isn't going to get crushed if something heavy falls on it. You want the models not to rattle around inside it. So basically you want to put bowl wrap around each model and then loosely put some scrunched up paper, that sort of thing, to hold them in place. And basically when you shake the box, the models should not move at all, but at the same time shouldn't be absolutely wedged in to the extent where they might take damage from the pressure of the contents in the box itself. Besides those, you ideally want the box to be as small as possible so you're not wasting excess packaging material. And if you're posting overseas, then it means that they're likely going to be a bit lighter, and that might save you some money on the postage front. If you think that you're going to be doing a lot of eBaying, it might well be worth investing in a bunch of single wall cardboard boxes, which you can buy off eBay itself. 3x3 three three inch ones are great for characters, 4x4 four four inch ones tend to be good for small infantry squads, and 6x6 six six inch ones will fit the majority of tanks in them. I also tend to save any bubble wrap lined envelopes, which can be good for posting more durable sprues in, and also if I'm reselling any rule books. 
Be sure to include a return address on the back of the parcel, as if it's not delivered, then these have genuinely saved me a lot of parcels that would never have come back to me otherwise. So it's a really big deal to make sure that you have this on the box. I've printed out a whole load of small copies of my address on one A4 sheet of paper, and I just chip away at them each time that I need to put them on more parcels. The recipient's address should be written very legibly, and you should really double check this if you make any silly mistakes when you're writing it, and that's the easiest way to lose the entire value of the parcel that you're just posting. And make sure that when you're sticking it on, you make it watertight to some extent by covering it with a fair bit of tape. I've got a nice big thick roll of clear packaging tape that I can just happily put a couple of strips of this across any address that I put down, meaning that the rain isn't likely to damage it or make it illegible. From there, you actually need to post the item, and I know this is going to vary a lot depending on where you are in the world, but in the UK, I just go to the local post office, generally post second class, and if the items are significantly expensive, then I'll ask them to be tracked as well. Within the UK, tracking is just £1 extra, so I only tend to bother with this if the items are something like £20 or more, because in all honesty, with the UK post service at least, over 99% of my parcels get to the person who they're being posted to. So usually just adding tracking on for the low value items is kind of just throwing money down the drain. For higher value stuff, you absolutely should though, and particularly if it's going overseas, because other countries' postage systems might not be quite as good as your own. In the UK, they have a drop and go system where you can fill out a performer before you get to the post office if you have, say, 10 or 20 parcels to post, and then bring them down to the post office. With the form, you don't have to wait or even queue. You just leave them with the post office workers, and they'll post them sometime over the course of the day. Not having to wait for this is a really big advantage, and if you're posting a lot of parcels, I'd definitely recommend it. I still remember the single biggest order I ever did, which was back when I was doing auctions, and I came down to the post office with multiple huge sacks of parcels in my car, I think the grand total was 169 parcels full of model soldiers all in one go. To say the least, the people in the post office were somewhat surprised. It did take multiple trips to carry it from my car to the post office. Though to be honest, I'm glad I don't do things in quite that big quantity anymore. Finally, after you've posted everything, hopefully it gets to the recipient without too much issue. eBay will of course take a cut of the profits. eBay fees tend to be the listing fee, around 30 pence, and 10% of the overall sale as the final value fee. PayPal also takes a further 3.5%, so for a typical parcel you're often looking at around about 15% of the total sale going to eBay. For me personally though, this is heavily outweighed by having the global market and reliably being able to sell miniatures at quite a high price, plus having the security with eBay for managing disputes and potential returns. Talking of that, in general I've had fairly good experiences with the eBay customer service, Occasionally I have people who want to return a model to me. I used to get a little bit more het up about that, particularly if I thought it was adequately described and photographed in the lot, but since then I've realised that it's really not worth stressing over. A certain proportion of people will just want to return their item. You don't really lose out too much by it, just the cost of posting it to them in the first place. Compared with the amount that you're standing to save by using eBay, it's very much small amounts of money. And often to make myself feel better, I've gone on to sell the item at a slight price higher than what my initial buyer paid for it, and that's certainly a good feeling indeed. In terms of any other issues people who you're posting might have, the easiest way is just to communicate with them. Occasionally things will get damaged in postage despite your best efforts, although I have to say, at least for me, it's very, very rare now. When that does happen, you can either give the option of just returning them to you, where hopefully you can just make an easy fix and resell the model again for the same price. Obviously, you'll refund the initial buyer in this case. Occasionally, if they're really not happy, you could just say, you can keep the model and I'll give you a partial refund of £5 off the model for the damage that it's taken in transit. Although you certainly don't have to do this, only if it's easier for you. If they leave you negative feedback and can't be bothered to return anything, then this is fine as well. I just advise you to use the feature where you can reply to feedback received, just to leave a little note to say your side of the story, just to give your future buyers insight as to what actually happened in the situation, and that you would have been prepared to rectify it if the buyer had actually been prepared to communicate. I feel like we're leaving it on a bit of a negative note, but I really like eBay, it saved me an absolute ton on my hobby over the years, and made me a very decent amount of money when I was a student buying and reselling big lots of Warhammer online. I think you do have to consider exactly how much time you're willing to put into it as to how much you want to get out of it, because there will be trade-offs and certainly it was a lot more viable when I was a student and more, had more time on my hands compared with now when I've got an actual job. So the eBaying I tend to do tends to be for things that will be low amounts of effort and high amounts of reward. 
such as reselling big expensive kits, or perhaps reselling bits from Games Workshop multi-buy value boxes so I can get the actual models that I want without having to wind up with a whole load of plastic that I didn't really want to buy. I honestly have found it a very helpful skill to have as I've been continuing with my hobby. It means that basically any miniatures that you do have can potentially be converted back into money very easily, albeit with a little bit of effort. And as it's such an expensive hobby, it makes it a lot more justifiable when you're spending more money on the latest plastic goodness that Games Workshop brings to us. So let me know any ideas and opinions down in the comments below. If you've got any tips for how best to sell your models, or anything that you've found that's worked particularly well in the past, then let me know. I'm certainly always keen to learn new things. I feel that this is a topic I could talk a lot more about. I might go in depth a little bit more in some of the different areas that we've covered today in the future. But for now, I think we'll leave it there. If you'd like to see any more content like this in the future, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics. In particular, we have new 40k tactics content coming out every day. If you're looking to buy any Warhammer in the near future and you live in the UK, I do have an affiliate link for Element Games in the video description down below. They do 20% off most Games Workshop products, deliver to your door, and a certain percentage of the sale goes to Allspex Tactics to help support the channel. So please consider it if you're thinking of buying some 40k in the near future and you'd like to help the channel out. Thanks very much for listening, and I hope to see all of you next time.